I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 800 kilometers more just to be the man who walked 870 nautical miles to fall down at your door. I'll do that, that's funny. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the sixth class in the GNAM series. Today we're going to be taking a look at the range of units we use in aviation to describe various distances. It can be a bit confusing at first because there are so many, but generally specific things are measured in specific distances. For example, in Europe we use feet for altitude. So this class is going to be fairly short, but it's basically going to look at the conversions between different units that are used for measuring distance. As I said in the intro, usually specific things are measured in very specific units, so let's start with long distance which is normally measured in nautical miles. We established in the second class when we looked at latitude and longitude that a nautical mile is one minute change in latitude. Normally we don't think of distances as degrees of latitude though, so let's put some numbers to it. One nautical mile is 1,852 meters or 1.852 kilometers. And it also equals 60, 76 feet. And we can convert between feet and meters using the conversion of one meter equals 3.28 feet. So let's just check our conversions to see if they work. I'm gonna pick, I don't know, five nautical miles and I want the value in kilometers and feet. So five, nautical miles times by 1.852 because it's 185, uh, 1,850 meters or 1.852 kilometers and that equals, and that equals 9.26 kilometers. And then if we want to find the value in feet, we would just use this conversion here and it would be 9,260 meters times by 3.28 to get it into feet, which gives us 30,372.8 feet. And if we were then to divide this number by 60,076 feet, we should get back to five nautical miles. So let's just do that. So we have 30,372.8 divided by 60,76 equals 4.99, yeah, let's call that five. So occasionally in the States, like the United States, I think they also use the statute mile for distance. And if you need to, then the conversion for that, that is good to remember is one statute mile equals 1.609 kilometers or 1,609 meters. You could also remember that there is a conversion between nautical miles and statute miles, but I would recommend just remembering a few conversions so you get to a common point and then convert from there. And what I mean by that is, uh, say I wanted those five nautical miles from earlier in statute miles. I have one conversion in my head for nautical miles, which is 1,852 meters, well, I have two, or 60, 76 feet. I can convert it into meters and then know what that is in kilometers and then I can go back into statute miles. I already know that 3.28 feet are in a meter and that 1.609 kilometers are in statute mile in every statute mile. So I can get to a statute mile by going through meters and kilometers. If you find it easier just to remember that one statute mile to one nautical mile, whatever that conversion is, then go for it. But that's just my personal recommendation. Short distances are generally measured in feet or meters. And using that same conversion that we've seen before, you can get between the two. So this is just an example of a chart into a place called Faro, which is in the south of Portugal that we go to often. And this diagram here is runway dimensions, which are in meters. So you can see that it's 2,445 meters long by 45 meters wide. 
and when we're talking about vertical heights we generally talk about feet and the threshold elevation is 24 feet and you can also see some uh, more examples of vertical distances being measured in feet. So this is the side view of an ILS approach coming in and you can see that it starts at 2,000 feet comes along and then at six nautical miles, because we're talking horizontal distances, we start to go down. And at four nautical miles, we've got to be 13 to 50 feet. And then we keep going down. And then we get all the way to the threshold elevation, which is at 24 feet. And that would be our zero nautical mile mark for the ILS. And you can also see some more examples down here. These are our minima that we use we've got to have at least these categories of visibility so you can see it's feet and then it's in meters slash kilometers and then the other one is in feet it gives you the units here so we need a cloud base this is um, of 200 feet that means the lowest level of cloud essentially and then we need at least 750 meters of visibility or if you're doing this slightly different type of approach you need 310 cloud base and one kilometer visibility. And then this is our altitude that we would descend down to before deciding whether to go around. You can also see something interesting about the vertical heights on this kind of diagram. You can see that the slope here says three degrees. Three degrees is a very common slope for instrument approaches and the reason behind it is because it makes the maths quite easy for us when we're in the air. You can see that as we go out to six nautical miles, it's 2,000 feet. So, or we could say that every three nautical miles, it's 1,000 feet. It's not exact, but it is pretty good estimation. So you can say that at roughly three nautical miles to go, we should be 1,000 feet. At six nautical miles, we should be 2,000 feet. And you can project it all the way back up and you could say that for us to be on profile, as they call it, like on the correct sort of vertical path, and we're at 12 nautical miles away from the runway, we should be at about 4,000 feet for it to make sense. So this is what we can use for our like descent planning as well, that, that three degrees uh, slope every three nautical miles is 1,000 feet. We basically use that to plan when we're gonna start our descent from our cruising altitude. To say this was our airport at Faro, and we are at, we know we need to get down to that, what was it, 2,000 feet? It was 2,000 feet here. And we were at, uh, I don't know, 35,000 feet. We know that we have to change in height by 33,000 feet, and with a nice gentle slope of three degrees, which is roughly a thousand feet for every three nautical miles. For us to descend this 33,000 feet, we'll need three nautical miles for every thousand feet of that. We would just multiply that by three and we would find out that we need to descend 99 nautical miles before this point. And that point, if you remember, was at six nautical miles. So if we descend 105 nautical miles before the runway threshold of Faro, we should get a nice gentle slope in towards landing. That won't come up in the ATPL exams, but it's just a handy wee trick to know when you're actually flying aircraft. So as I said, nice short class there. The only real things to remember are these conversions and that three degree uh, slope trick of 1000 feet is three nautical miles, although that won't come up in the exam, I don't think. So one nautical mile, 180, 1,852 meters or 6076 feet. One statute mile is 1.609 kilometers or 1,609 meters. One meter is 3.28 feet and convert between them as you see fit.